No, land committee was done already. So we go right into law and order. OST Law and Order Committee. Your first Thank you, Chairman. First one, resolution of the Oglala, or resolution of the Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe, an unincorporated tribe. Resolution authoring the Oglala Sioux Tribe to request, negotiate, and accept a Bureau of Indian Affairs, Indian Self-Determination and Education Assistance Act, PL 93638 contract for the operation of law enforcement. Whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe adopted its constitution and bylaws by a referendum vote on December 10, 1935, in accordance with Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934, 25 U.S.C. 476, and under Article 1 of the Oglala Sioux Tribe Constitution. The Oglala Sioux Tribal Council is the governing body of the Oglala Sioux Tribe. And whereas Article 4, Section 1A of the Oglala Sioux Tribe Constitution authorizes the Tribal Council to, nego to negotiate with the federal, state, and local governments on behalf of the tribe, and to advise and consult with the representatives of the Interior Department on all activities of the department that may affect the Pine Ridge res Reservation. And whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe was prior to 2017 operating its BIA law enforcement program under PL 93638 contract between the Secretary of Interior and the Oglala Sioux Tribe's Department of Public Safety. And whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council has abolished that Department of Public Safety. And whereas this action has now forced the tribe Tribal Council to reconsider how law enforcement should be operated on Pine Ridge Reservation both now and in the future. And whereas the Tribal Council has considered this issue carefully and has determined that law enforcement is best operated under PL 93638 contract <coughs> between the Secretary of Interior and the Oglala Sioux Tribe. And whereas since the abolition of the Tribe's Department of Public Safety, no PL 638 93638 contract has been in place and no new federal law enforcement monies are currently available for drawdown. Therefore, it be resolved that the Oglasu Tribal Council hereby authorizes its presidents and his designees to request, negotiate, and enter a PL 93638 contract between the Secretary of Interior or his designees and the Oglala Sioux Tribe for the Tribal Operation of Law Enforcement Services on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, and directs him to begin this process as soon as possible. And be it further resolved that the Tribal President shall work directly with the Oglala Sioux Tribes, it should be Law, law and Order Committee, on this effort, and keep the Tribal Council apprised on the progress of this work. I so move. Motion by Stanley Little White Man. Seconded by Stephanie Leisure. Secretary, call for the vote, please. Blaine Little Thunder. Oh. Jim Meeks. Yes. Cora White Horse. Stanley Little White Man. Yes. Austin Watkins. Oh. Stephanie Leisure. Yes. Valentina Mardanian. Yes. Lydia Bearkiller. Yes. James Cross. Yes. Robin Tapio. Uh. Philip Goodcrow. No. Oh. David Puyer. Sonia Little Hawk Weston. Jackie Sears. Ha. Huh. Colin C. J. Clifford. No. Oh. Lisa Jumpin Eagle Dalion. Uh -huh. Craig Dillon. Yes. Sonia Little Hot Weston. Yes. Motion did carry 15 yes, zero no, zero abstain, and two not voting. Thank you. Next one. Thank you, Chairman. I'll defer the next uh, resolution Change. to the Secretary to read. Pretty lengthy. James Cross. Okay. 
Resolution of the Oglaw Sioux Tribal Council, the Oglaw Sioux Tribe requesting law enforcement assistance from the Attorney General and the Secretary of the Interior for law enforcement in Indian Country and calling upon Congress to enact federal legislation providing for full and fair funding for tribal law enforcement, detention in tribal courts and authorizing tribal law enforcement plans jointly funded by Interior and Justice under a demonstration plan similar to Public Law 10246. 4-477. Whereas the Gloucester Tribe is a federally recognized Indian tribe which is vested with sovereign authority to provide public safety, law enforcement, and administration of justice on a Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. And whereas Indian nations and tribes have inherent sovereign authority to preserve public safety, provide law enforcement, and administer justice to make our permanent home a livable home is protected by the 1868 Sioux Nation Treaty. As the Supreme Court recognized in Ex Parte Crow Dog 109 U.S. 556, 568, 1883. The pledge is secured to these people with whom the United States was contracting as a distinct political body and orderly government by appropriate legislation thereafter to be framed and enacted necessarily implies that among the arts of civilized life, which it was the very purpose of all these arrangements to introduce and naturalize among them, was the highest and best of all that of self-government. The regulation by themselves of their own members by the administration of their own laws and customs. And uh, the Supreme Court held in the United States versus Wheeler 435 U.S. 313, 1978. The sovereign tribal right of internal self-government includes the right to prescribe laws applicable to tribe members and to enforce these laws, those laws by criminal sanctions. See 18 U.S.C. section 1152. General Crimes Act does not extend to an Indian punished by the local law of the tribe. And then United States versus Lara, 541 U.S. 193-2004, the Supreme Court upheld tribal government to exercise criminal jurisdiction over all Indians, 25 U.S. C. Section 1301, Subsection 2. And whereas tribal law enforcement officers serve as first responders to all Indian country crime, including crimes by non-Indians, exercise federal law enforcement authority pursuant to BIA special law enforcement commissions and public law 93638 contracts and retain inherent sovereign authority to stop, detain, process, and transfer non-Indians who commit Indian country crimes to the federal or state prosecuting authorities. United States versus Terry, 400 F. 3rd, 575, 8th Circuit, 2005, and to prosecute domestic violence against women offenses committed by non-Indian offenders, as recognized in the 2013 Violence Against Women Act. <coughs> and whereas the Glossy Tribe is suffering an unparalleled wave of violence on, our, on their reservations, with gangland-style violence carried out by drug dealers, violence and drug crimes increasing. Now, therefore, be it, re for, be it resolved that the Oglossi Tribe calls upon the U.S. Attorney General, the Secretary of the Interior, and Congress to promote, establish, and enact a tribal law and order statute to, demonst to demonstration program for Indian tribes that are under federal jurisdiction, have large reservation populations, more than 2,500 suffer high rates of violence and crime in order to provide ongoing tribal police and law enforcement funding and call upon Congress secure enactment of the statute and necessary appropriations. And be it further resolved that the Attorney General, the Secretary of the Interior and Congress should implement the aforesaid tribal law and order statute to authorize Indian tribes with 2,500 or more members or consortia of tribes with 2,500 or more members to develop comprehensive law enforcement plans for utilizing interior public law 93-638 contracts together 
with Justice Department demonstration grants to effectively address violence and drug crimes in Indian Country under federal and tribal jurisdiction and secure enactment of the statute. Similar to the System for Labor Training programs under Public Law 102-477, and be it further resolved that the Attorney General and the Secretary of the Interior should seek full and fair funding for tribal law enforcement, public safety, detention facilities, and the administration of justice in any country, including a CJS appropriations for the Department of Justice to mandate 7% set aside of Office of Justice program funds for Indian Country and 5% set aside of crime, crime Victims Fund for Indian Country. And be it further resolved that Congress should acknowledge the authority of Indian tribes to establish law enforcement training and certification standards for tribal police and law enforcement, provided that such tribal standards meet or exceed federal or state law enforcement training and certification standards. And be it further resolved that the Oglossi Tribal Council of the Oglossi Tribe hereby request law enforcement assistance from the Attorney General and the Secretary of the Interior for law enforcement in Indian Country and calling upon Congress to enact federal legislation providing for full and fair funding for tribal law enforcement detention in tribal courts and authorizing tribal law enforcement plans jointly funded by Interior and Justice under a demonstration plan similar to Public Law 102-477. Collins Clifford. Um, Mr. Chair, at the end there, you're talking about the <clears throat> wording that as um, asking for full funding. Um, Whenever you ask that full funding to Congress, it's what they consider full funding in certain documents that we deal with in, in tribes and Congress. We need to put the 100% full funding. Otherwise, arbitrarily, can they could, at, at the next level, like the bureau level, the extension is that they will determine what they consider full funding. So it would, <clears throat> you know, what you need to <clears throat> actually add 100% That full would be funding. up to the motion maker. Stanley, are you the motion maker? Okay, so then I, I would like to see that added, if, if you don't mind, Stanley, that we, we actually put 100% full funding not just full funding, because I've seen it and experienced it where they've, yeah. they, they will arbitrarily change that to what they feel is full funding. Yeah. Thank you. I believe they're done. Motion, Motion by Stanley, look at Little White Man, seconded by Sonia Weston. Secretary, call for the vote. Blaine Hill Thunder. Oh. Jim Meeks. Good. Cora White Horse. Stanley Little White Man. Yes. Austin Watkins. Oh. Stephanie Leisure. Yes. Valentina Merdanian. Yes. Lydia Bear Killer. Yes. James Cross. Yes. Robin Tapio. Huh. Philip Goodcrow. Oh. David Puyer, yes. Sonia Lilhawk Weston, uh, Jackie Sears, huh. Colin C.J. Clifford, mm -hmm. oh. Lisa Jumpin' Eagle Dalion, uh -huh. Craig Dillon. Yes. Motion carried 16 yes, zero no, zero abstain, and one not voting. Next one, please. Thank you, Chairman. 
Ordinance of the Oglala Sioux Tribe of Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe and Unincorporated Tribe. Ordinance of the Oglala Sioux Tribe of Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe to affirm the adoption of the amended regulations of the Oglala Sioux Tribe Gaming Regulatory Agency pursuant to section 14 of the ordinance number 14-41, the Tribal Gaming Regulatory Ordinance of the Oglala Sioux Tribe. Whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe adopted its constitution and bylaws by a referendum vote on December 14, 1935, in accordance with Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934, 25 U.S.C. subsection 5123, and under Article 3 of the Constitution, the Oglala Sioux Tribe the Tribal Council is the governing body of the Oglala Sioux Tribe. And whereas the Tribal Council has the power to protect and promote the health and general welfare of the Oglala Sioux Tribe and its membership, pursuant to Article 4 and Section 1W of the o Tribal Constitution, and whereas the Tribal Council has the power to manage the economic affairs of the Tribe and to regulate the conduct of trade and the use and disposition of property on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, pursuant to Article 4, Section 1T and 1M of the Tribal Constitution. And whereas the Tribal Council has power over the use, disposition, sale, lease, or encumbrances of tribal lands pursuant to Article 4, Section 1C and Article X of the Tribal Constitution. And whereas on November 25th, 2014, the Tribal Council enacted Ordinance Number 14-41, amending the Tribal Gaming Regulatory Ordinance of the Oglala Sioux Tribe, reference the Gaming Ordinance, which authorizes the Oglala Sioux Tribe Gaming Regulatory Agency, the OSTGRA, to promulgate regulations and guidelines to deem as deemed appropriate to implement the gaming ordinance, subject to affirmation of the Tribal Council by duly adopted ordinance. And whereas the OSTGRA recently updated and amended its existing regulations to ensure the proper implementation of the gaming ordinance and establish appropriate standards and guidelines applicable to the tribe's gaming operations. And whereas the Tribal Council desires to affirm the amendments to the OSTGRA regulations, which amendments will ensure the proper implementation of the gaming ordinance in a manner consistent with the state, the Tribal State Compact with the State of South Dakota, authorizing Class Three gaming, Indian gaming on the tribe's Indian lands. And therefore, be it ordained that pursuant to Section 14Z of the Gaming Ordinance, the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council hereby affirms the adoption of the amended Oglala Sioux Tribal Gaming Regulatory Agency regulations in the form attached hereto and incorporated herein by reference. Motion. Question. 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 Do you have the regulation? Yes, I think they should have gave them to all of you guys. Right there. This is a big, thick one right here. Yeah, I have it right here. You could have Phillips, he already memorized it. <laughs> yep, that's the one. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Question, Sonia Weston. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I was just looking, uh, trying to read. This is a really thick document, and I know I kind of read through some of it, and I didn't get to read the whole thing, but... I guess uh, my question is, uh, we had an a incident a while back concerning a, a gaming, commission, gaming commission employee. And the whole process of which way this employee was to, could follow was either she thought through the casino or through, her, through the uh, the gaming side, gaming commission side, and 
on top of the, we finally uh, heard from the attorney through Law and Order Committee, we still did not come to a decision how this, how or what direction employees need to follow. I guess what I'm trying to say is that um, when you work in a casino and you get suspended or terminated, any kind of disciplinary action, you, they, they tell you you go through an appeal process and they have an administrative law judge that rules on your decision. While with the gaming side, we wanted to make sure that the gaming employees also have a due process part to, to play. So what my question is, is uh, where in here would we find that on what page, Sally? Nine. And uh, how, Nine what the, I'm not, I'm not so I'm looking at 202? Mm -hmm. That's where I thought, okay, so if it's on page 202, I guess we just need to make sure that we understand that there is a process. Those are just fines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so where's their a hearing? Okay, right here on 204. I guess I'm just wanting to make sure because we kind of had to deal with that through Law and Order Committee. And so we want to make sure that uh, anyone that's working with the gaming side, the Gaming Commission office, uh, you know, if anything should happen down the road, they have an appeal process. They know now what direction they go and so they don't get be pushed back from the casino side. I guess I just wanted to throw that out there because I wanted to make sure we, we did ask uh, the attorney to go back and work with Shorty on this to make sure. We also told Shorty about it, that we need to make sure that this is covered somewhere. And he says that, um, yeah, it wasn't covered at that time. So we want to make sure it's covered in here now. That's just my question. He stepped out of the room. Tina Mordania. Given given that you know this is this is looking forward, but you know there's what has happened in the past to these employees who were labeled under the Gaming Commission still haven't found any resolve in regards to their issues. And so once the attorney gives his opinion as to this process and that it is giving them uh, an opportunity to have some type of um, recourse <laughs> because at that point they had no recourse and should should this pass that those employees who were terminated with no no recourse should be given that opportunity to go through this process and and then also the fact that I'm trying to understand their roles and responsibilities as commissioners to to be a part of that process as well and and i feel like there's a certain conflict of interest in regards to the commissioners and the hearing process so that's why i'd like the attorney's opinion regarding the process that the employees have at this point within this these amended changes He said, give me five minutes. Yeah. Philip Goodkrill. <clears throat> I, I, with, uh, with the gaming uh, regulatory agency, and if you read, if you go through the table of contents, all, all the, uh, the areas in this, is, uh, as required by the National Union Gaming Commission, are to, uh, Minimum internal con control standards that that uh, that has to be adopted by the tribe, which govern each area. Whether it's in it, uh, specifically to the casino operations, but when you do de uh, deal with the uh, uh, 
personnel issues, you, uh, you go to the humans, uh, human uh, resource office. Because Well, the the gaming office has their own, and and the casino has their own. That's what that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, they don't specify in here because everything's uh, related to the casino operations. Is whether it's a blackjack or uh, or somebody contesting the patron contesting issues at the casino. All those are uh, stipulated in here. The process to go through, and so that's how I. I being on a gaming commission for several years, I, that's how, and this was adopted during our uh, last two years uh, as, as a gaming commissioner. I have James Cross, Stanley Little White Man, Tina Merdanian, and Jackie Sears. When I, um, when I asked the general manager about that process, he, um, he said that the that council passed it, our committee passed it in a handbook, and, um, and the council passed it in a handbook that process and so that's because I just kind of wanted some information on that and so that's where I kind of left that but um, maybe we need to look at that too. Stanley Lil White man. Chairman I think we're talking about two separate things here one is the regulation the operation of the gaming industry in itself mm -hmm. the other thing that's being brought up here has to do with personnel which is in a separate manual in itself in itself. So it's not going to be addressed in here. This is for what the operation has to operate with. Mm -hmm. So it's more regulatory and has nothing to do with the um, uh, personnel side of what everybody's bringing up here. So there are two separate issues. This is more for the gaming regulatory. Okay. Tina Merdanian. I understand that, but in regards to their, their policies and procedures me meeting that minimum requirement also includes the other component. And typically they go hand in hand because it gives the, it gives the um, customer an opportunity to go through this process. However, like I said, it doesn't say anything in regards to the roles and responsibilities of those employees under these minimum requirement standards of our regulations. At this point, I would like to, to table this to review it <coughs> more thoroughly and have our attorney be able to have a chance to review it as well. So my motion is to table. Before you make that motion, he still has five minutes to go and look at what he needs to be looking at before you do that. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. This is not a pers personnel manual. These are gaming regulations for the operation of the casino. And it's my understanding that these have been in the works for a long time, that they've um, been passed over. I'm sorry. Please, please be recognized. And use your microphone, please. Sonia Weston. I want to jump in front of anybody, but I just want to comment. You know, through Law and Order Committee, we asked our attorney to go back and review that. Mm -hmm. That process part, because we were stuck on which way do we give this lady direction? To the casino side or to the gaming side? So because we didn't, either way you looked at it, the GM was saying, no, I don't handle that. Goes back to the commission. Commission was saying the same thing. I mean, commission took the action, but we had the very same uh, uh, discussion in our Law and Order Committee, so that's where we asked uh, Steve if you can go and look into it to see what does, what, what does it say within their handbook. Because can he answer that? He needs to yeah. let him answer so that now. Hear. And then so we'll go to Cora. The, the issue that uh, the Law and Order Committee dealt with was a, was a licensing issue. And the the Gaming Commission does have the authority to um, have a hearing on a license revocation. And these procedures would govern that. They also have the authority to issue penalties and fines. That's at page 200. Yeah. And these procedures govern the hearings on those kinds of actions. When I said this is not a personnel manual, I, I really meant it. <laughs> there may be some personnel who work for the casino who are licensed 
and there may be license hearings, and that would be governed here. But this does not appear to govern all routine personnel matters. And so I have asked the, um, the gaming regulatory authority to, to provide whatever personnel manuals they have, um, but I have not received them, okay? But that's not what this is, and I, I, don't, I don't believe that that should hold up adoption of this manual because it, it, these are gaming regulations governing the conduct of gaming, and they, I do believe that they are, um, they've been prepared by an attorney, Elizabeth Homer, who works for the Gaming Commission. Um, I think they've gone through review through the Gaming Authority. They appear to be well-drafted regulations. <laughs> However, if the council has a concern that there is a, a need to fill a gap in terms of personnel, that could be addressed through separate, through a separate uh, process. But these regulations appear to be um, exactly what they purport to be, meaning regulations of the gaming authority itself. And the hearings are on licensure hearings or penalty hearings and that sort of thing. Exactly the kind of gaming hearings that you would expect. Cora Whitehorse. Thank you. Um, I, I know that most of you were present at the meeting about two, maybe three months ago. It was a joint meeting between EB&D and finance. And um, at that meeting, we discussed this issue, Tina's issue specifically. And we did request that um, Shorty and Bill work together to figure out which employees were under the casino and which were supposed to be under the gaming commission because um, that way their appeal processes would be defined because at this point they're not and still today they're not because we haven't, they never brought that back. And the thing that it was based on was the device fees because the device fees were not enough to cover the employees. So they were supposed to meet together and come back, but that's totally separate from the gaming regulations. And um, like Steve said, this, this has been in the process for a long time, and that is totally separate from the, uh, the personnel issues that we're talking about. So um, those need to be brought back. Maybe Law and Order needs to request Shorty to come to their meeting or something, and Bill to make sure that that's getting done. Okay, thank you. So we have a motion on the floor to table made by Tina Merdanian. Jackie, roll, Jackie Sears, you're the second. Call for the vote. Blaine Little Thunder. Yeah. Jim Meeks. Did they have a second on that? Yes. Yes. No. Cora Whitehorse. No. Stanley Low Whiteman. No. Austin Watkins. No. Stephanie Leisure. Yes. Valentina Merdanian. Yes. Lydia Bearkiller. No. James Cross. Yes. Robin Tapio. Here. Philip Goodcrow. No. David Puyer. No. Sonia Lilhawk Weston. Ha. Huh. Jackie Sears. Ha. Huh. Colin C.J. Clifford. Oh. Lisa Jumpin' Eagle Dalion. Oh, ha. Huh. Craig Dillon. No. Motion to table did fail. Seven yes, <coughs> 10 no. Collins Clifford. I know I had my hand up earlier, but you ran your motion anyway, but uh, to the comment or the thing I wanted to say was that 
both parties had come in front of us and denied having any responsibility on the policy part of who was governing and how the procedures worked out there. Both denied taking the part in, in that particular one to this day, and that's how that stood. There was no resolve to it other than, well, that's, that's the way it goes, I guess, and that, that's some really bad uh, bad way to deal with people or of our of our own people. So, you know, that's something to think about, you know. <clears throat> They denied, denied that person uh, avenue, and so did the, the personnel policy part of their review denied that person that. And I, I just don't see that, see how that's working. And if they're gonna be bosses, then and they have no recommendations uh, other than just for the regulations, they better be square and understand what they're doing out there and that they don't deal with the personnel period on the regulation part. So that's why they came to you, and that's why it's in here in this council floor right now. Sonia Weston. Just one last comment was, I was just asked uh, about this gaming regulation, if it came through us, and I uh, just want to say that this was on the table since last administration. So this new administration never even probably looked at it. It just came back on to, no, it came back on to this Law and Order Committee. They just put it back on the agenda and they brought it forward. So I guess, uh, you know, it didn't actually, it was on the uh, agenda from last administration, so it just carried forward. Moving on. Yes. The tabling motion failed. No, it's a motion and a second. We have a motion and a second, and a second by Philip Goodcrow. Call for the vote. Lane Little Thunder. Oh. Jim Meeks. Yes. Cora Whitehorse. Yes. Stanley Low Whiteman. Yes. Austin Watkins. Oh. Stephanie Leisure. No. Valentina Mardanian. No. Lady Albert Killer. Yes. James Cross. No. Robin Tapio. Not voting. Philip Goodcrow. Oh. David Puyer. Good. Sonia Lilhawk Weston. No. Jackie Sears. Here. Colin C.J. Clifford. Here. Lisa Jumpin Eagle Dalion. Here. Craig Dillon. Yes. Motion approved. Nine yes, seven no, with one now voted. Okay, moving on. Okay, Ordinance of the Oglala Sioux Tribe Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe and Unincorporated Tribe. Ordinance of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council to adopting the Oglala Sioux Tribe Tort Claims Ordinance for Class Three Tribal Gaming Establishments. Whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe adopted its constitution and bylaws by referendum vote on December 14, 1935, in accordance with Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934, 25 U.S.C. subsection 5123. And under Article 3 of the Constitution, the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council is the governing body of the Oglala Sioux Tribe. And whereas the Tribal Council has the power to protect and promote the health and general welfare of the Oglala Sioux Tribe and its membership, pursuant to tri uh, Article 4, Section 1W of the Tribal Constitution, and whereas the Tribal Council has the power to manage the economic affairs of the tribe and to regulate the conduct of trade and use and disposition of property on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, pursuant to Article 4, Section 1T and 1M of the Tribal Constitution. And whereas the Tribal Council has the power to charter subordinate organizations for economic purposes and to regulate the activities of associations thus chartered by the Tribal Council, pursuant to Article 4, Section 10 
of the tribal constitution. And whereas the tribal council has established two class three, which should be just one class three, class three gaming establishment on the Indian, Re Indian lands of the tribe known as Prairie Wind Casino. and East Winds Casino. Yeah, strike out class three. Establish two gaming establishments on the Indian lands of the tribe known as Prairie Wind Casino and East Winds Casino. And whereas the Law and Order Committee on, of the Tribal Council met on May 3rd, 2017, by and by motion recommended the adoption of the Oglala Sioux Tribe Tort Claims Ordinance for the Strike Out Class 3 for tribal gaming establishments to provide guests and patrons of the tribe's tribal Strike Out Class 3 tribal gaming establishments with a forum for redress of certain claims which would otherwise be barred because of the tribe's sovereign immunity from suit. And whereas the Tribal Council agrees with the recommendations <coughs> of the Law and Order Committee, and therefore be it ordained that the Tribal, the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council hereby enacts the attached Oglala Sioux Tribe Tort Claims Ordinance for Tribal Gaming Establishments, and be it further ordained that the said ordinance shall take effect immediately. <coughs> I'll make the motion by striking out those Class 3s. Question. Secretary. Uh, you mentioned uh, there's an attached tort claims ordinance and did therefore be it ordained? Is, is there an attachment? Yes. It um, should be written into your um, regulatory. Councilman Goodcrow said it was in the page 51 on the regs. Page 5 1 addresses tort claims. Mm -hmm. This Steve, is a Steve Gunn. The, the tort claims ordinance um, is a separate ordinance. It's an ordinance. These are these are regulations of the of the gaming commission adopted pursuant to the gaming ordinance. There's a, a section in the gaming ordinance, section 14, which allows the commission to have regulations. That's what this is. But this, uh, what Mr. Little White Man read was the tort claims ordinance of the tribal council. Um, so, and there there is nothing attached. Um, so it, it's not intended to refer back to the regulations. So um, I have a document that that is a tort claims ordinance for class three tribal gaming establishments, um, but it's a it's a I'd have to visit with the committee to to know if this is the version that they intended to bring forward. Motion. We'll motion. Motion. We'll just take it off um, agenda and move it to law and order. Get it addressed. You'll just refer it back to law and order. Motion to table and refer back to law and order committee. Seconded by Sonia Weston. Call for the vote, please. Vote. Jim Meeks. Yes. Corey White Horse. Yes. Stanley Little White Man. Yes. Austin Watkins. Oh. Stephanie Leisure. Yes. Valentina Merdanian. Yes. Lady Bear Killer. Yes. James Cross. Yes. 
Robin Tapio. Huh. Philip Goodcrow. Oh. David Puyer. <coughs> Sonia Lilhawk Weston. Ha. Huh. Jackie Sears. Ha. Huh. Colin C.J. Clifford. Oh. Lisa Jumpin' Eagle Dalion. Ha. Uh -huh. Craig Dillon. No. Motion to table and refer back to the Law and Order Committee. 16 yes, one no. And that's your last one. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Um, next is the President's Office. I believe we dealt with pretty much everything on there. Um, the only thing that we, we didn't address, and I just went ahead and pushed that issue Thursday after the meeting was uh, to have a letter on the drought issue on the Ag Bill that um, we get to the opportunity to address Senator Thune who is presented is going to be presenting a, a, a new Ag Bill on that to assist for Indian farmers and ranchers and not cut the commodity cheese program. Those, that, those were two really big issues that people aren't talking about, but they, they are viable. So th those are the, the, that was a part of the letter that I had my office or my staff draft them their memo to, to send to Senator Thune, Collins Clifford. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you might wanna, on part of the, the ag part of, of the drought, one of the reasons um, Shannon County was not counted in there is because on a daily note, we need to have that weather machine read. Yeah, and that's why that's why and I'm requesting the meeting with Senator Thune so we can r override that and get that money in there. I, I yes, I, I understand that part, but what I'm what I'm getting to is that we need to designate somebody in our tribe that's either in the field of natural resources but understands that that job has to be done every day. Yep, and that, that comes times. from the committee. That needs to go back. That part needs to come back to the committee to to get that selection made. Okay. Okay. I just thank I you. Just thought I'd bring it forward. Okay. Moving on. Two thirds items. E B and D committee. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, everything. Everything on mine is done. Resolution of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe, an unincorporated tribe. Resolution of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council to approve the donation request to the Shakopee Metawakata Sioux for the Sea Store Hotel, New Class 2 Casino, and RV Park projects. Whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe adopted its constitution and bylaws by referendum vote on December 14, 1935, in accordance with Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934, 25 U.S.C. subsection 5123. And under Article 3 of the Oglala Sioux Tribe Constitution, the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council is the governing body of the Oglala Sioux Tribe. Whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe Constitution, Article 4, Section I, F, gives the Tribal Council the authority to manage all economic affairs and enterprises of the tribe. And whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe, at its regular session on August 29th, 2017, per resolution, supports the design and construction of a new hotel of a new casino hotel to replace the existing hotel, and whereas the existing hotel per structural, per structural engineering observation report is shifting, causing extensive damage to the floors, roof, walls, and it cannot be predicted how much longer the hotel can be deemed as safe for customers. Whereas the Prairie Wind Casino has paid a total of 58,000 for architectural services, 
pre-construction services and feasibility studies to complete a C-store hotel, new class two casino and a RV park. Whereas it is determined the new hotel project is priority, but other projects need it to consider, to be considered. I think B needs to be in there. Be considered and therefore be it resolved in order to complete the, the work associated with the architectural service, pre-construction services, and feasibility studies, the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council hereby approves the donation request to the Shakopee Metawakata Sioux in the amount of 86000 I so move. Motion by Lisa Jumpin' Eagle, seconded by Robin Tapio. Call for the vote, please. Blaine Little Thunder. Uh, not voting. Jim Meeks. Yes. Cora Whitehorse. Yes. Stanley Little White Man. No. Austin Watkins. No. Stephanie Leisure. Yes. Valentina Merdanian. Uh, I have a question real quick. No, we gotta go. Okay. <laughs> no. Lydia Bear Killer. No. James Cross. Yes. Robin Tapio. Huh. Philip Goodcrow. Oh. David Puyer. Yes. Sonia Littlehawk Weston. Ha. Huh. Jackie Sears. Ha. Huh. Colin C.J. Clifford. Oh. Lisa Jumpin' Eagle Dalion. Oh, ha. Huh. Craig Dillon. Yes. <coughs> Motion did carry. 12 yes, <coughs> 4 no, 0 abstain, and 1 not voting. Next one, please. I guess we're going on to the Finance Committee. Okay. Resolution of the Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe approving the Constitution Reform Initiative Task Force to move forward with the Strategic Task Force Work Plan of the Oglala Sioux Tribe. Whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe adopted its Constitution and bylaws by referendum vote on December 14, 1935 in accordance with Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934. And under Article 3 of the Constitution, the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council is the governing body of the Oglala Sioux Tribe. And whereas pursuant to the Constitution and bylaws of the Oglala Sioux Tribe, the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council exercises legislative powers to enact and promulgate resolutions and ordinances. And whereas Article 4, Section 1W, authorizes the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council to adopt laws protecting and promoting the health and general welfare of the Oglala Sioux Tribe and its membership. And whereas Article 4, Section 1T of the Oglala Sioux Constitution gives the Oglala Sioux <coughs> Tribal Council the power to delegate to subordinate boards or officers any of the enumerated powers in Article 4, Section 1, reserving the right to review any action taken by virtue of such delegated power. And whereas Article 11 of the Oglala Sioux Constitution provides for amendments to the Oglala Sioux Constitution by secretarial election at the request of two-thirds of the Tribal Council or upon presentation of a petition signed by one-third of the qualified voters, members of the tribe. And whereas the Finance Committee is a standing committee of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council and has been delegated the power to oversee financial matters on behalf of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council and the Oglala Oyate. And whereas on September 21st, 2017, the Finance Committee met, reviewed, and approved a motion to forward the Strategic Task Force work plan of the Oglala Sioux Tribe regarding the constitutional reform onto the Tribal Council agenda for review and approval in order for the constitutional reform initiative task force to move forward. And whereas on September 21st, 2017, the Finance Committee met, 
reviewed and approved a motion approving unobligated funds in the amount of $60,611 from the Aid to Tribal Government 2017 budget to be utilized for the Oglala Sioux Tribes constitutional reform. And whereas it is in the best interest of the Oglala Sioux Tribe and the Oglala Oyate to approve the Constitution Reform Initiative Task Force and Strategic Task Force Work Plan of the Oglala Sioux Tribe. Now, therefore, be it resolved for all the above mentioned reasons, the Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe hereby approves the Constitution Reform Initiative Task Force moving forward with the Strategic Task Force Work Plan of the Oglala Sioux Tribe attached here too. And with that, I move. Motion by Cora Whitehorse. Se excuse me, seconded by Jackie Sears. Question, Sonia Weston. Question, Dave Puyer. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, uh, I know that through Law and Order Committee, we did assign uh, a couple of um, council to sit on this task force, move forward with the constitutional reform, and that was Ms. Uh, Tina Merdanian and Ms. Jackie Sears. Uh, from that time, they have asked others to jump on board and kind of be a part of the task force, but I just wanted to, uh, since we're on uh, Keeley Radio and people out there have been calling and wanting to know about the constitutional reform, what is going on with it, is it going to happen, and so now that uh, the, the um, resolution has been read and uh, if it's passed, I think I'd like to ask um, maybe Ms. Berdanian if she can give just a comment to the people on what's going to happen. Yeah, let's run the vote first. Yeah. Let's, let's okay. finish business here real quick. Call for the vote, please. Lane Little Thunder. Too late. Oh. Jim Meeks. Yes. Cora White Horse. Yes. Stanley Little White Man. Yes. Austin Watkins. Oh. Stephanie Leisure. Yes. Valentina Merdanian. Yes. Lydia Bearkiller. Yes. James Cross. Yes. Robin Tapio. Huh. Philip Goodcrow. Oh. David Puyer. Sonia Littlehawk Weston. Ha. Huh. Jackie Sears. Ha. Huh. Colin C.J. Clifford. Ho. Oh. Lisa Jumpin Eagle Dalion. Craig Dillon. Yes. Motion carried 17 yes, zero no. Thank you, Council. So, Councilwoman Merdanian, will you give us an update on what's happening with your process? Dave Puyer? 17 yes. Sixteen yes, one no. Officially. Okay, proceed. So in regards to the constitutional reform, the task force developed uh, uh, a plan, initiative, timeline of how we were going to move forward in regards to the best way to get it out to the people and so in regards to that, we want to work with our youth and our elderly as well. We developed a survey that would go out to the nine districts. From our budget, we would be able to hire some facilitators to assist us going out to the nine districts and working with the people to administer the survey. We'd also put this online because it's important for our membership who are off the reservation to also give their input. We hope to have youth forums and being able to gather their information as they are our future voters as well as our future leaders. And so with that being said, we want input from our youth, our elders, and our membership throughout this country. So with that being said, we plan to move forward with the survey and go ahead and select individuals we have a job description of that facilitator. We would select them to go out to the districts, compile all that information, bring in that report back as to those revisions that need to, that the people think that are important 
as far as our constitutional revisions. And then, of course, counsel themselves uh, through the task force to look at specific articles that govern us that need to be revised as well. And with that being said, we would also work with our courts. We also need to work with our other entities within the reservation to assist us in how we move forward in the separation of powers as well as our election committee and our election code and so forth. And once we draft those revisions based upon the public's views, that would also go back to the community. And before it's all said and done, several drafts will be done that will be coming to the community and be, I mean, to council as the updates go. And we are meeting with the um, acting superintendent to determine the secretarial election as well as trying to move that forward and planning for that so that we would have the possible amendments and revisions to our constitution available for our people during election, our general election in 2018. So do you have a timeline that you put on all of your dates? Can yes. we get copies of that so I can forward them too? Those are in your packets already. In this all here? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Okay. Jackie Sears, Dave Puyer. I think well, one of the things we have to make clear is that um, this is the people's chance to get out there and uh, put their, you know, their recommendations and what they would like to see changed in our constitution. And they were asking, you know, what's our role in there? We're just, as this task force, is to ensure that our timelines are met, that this, gets, this process gets done by we're looking at the spring to get it done. So it's, we're going to be hiring people to actually go out and do the work, that um, there won't be no conflict for tribal government and that we're just ma maintaining the, yeah, to be neutral and that we're not going to have a, um, a place in there where we're going to make this decision for them. It's not going to happen like that. We're just enforcing that it gets done on a timely manner. That's it. Okay. Dave Poyer. Jim, I guess I don't have a list of the task force and when they meet, uh, by when do we have to get them in because land committee has been waiting for three years for a, a constitutional uh, change that we wanted but if we could get that, I don't know, maybe I mislaid it and all this junk, but I, I would like to see if we can run the election ourselves because every time uh, the bureau runs them, you, before when they ran them, if you go to the post office, all those ballots are laying in, in, the, in the trash can. So I think there has to be, see if there's another way that we can run these uh, secretarial elections. Okay. So that's where we are. All right, we move on. Committee Chair from the Finance, are you ready for your next one? Yeah. Proceed, please. Okay. Are we going to run the vote? Or? Yeah. We did. We did. did we? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. I questioned your vote. Okay. We ran the vote already. We just had to change Dave's vote. And okay. then people started having questions, and then I went into the update of the task force. So. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Resolution of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe approving the general fund budget modification for the White Clay District Tribal Council representatives. CL1 and CL2 travel line items to transfer $3,000 and $5,000 respectively to the White Clay District to supplement and support the 50 remaining education assistance applications for that district. 
Whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe adopted its constitution and bylaws by referendum vote on December 14, 1935 in accordance with Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934 and under Article 3 of the Constitution. The Oglala Sioux Tribal Council is the governing body of the Oglala Sioux Tribe and whereas pursuant to the constitution and bylaws of the Oglala Sioux Tribe, the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council exercises legislative powers to enact and promulgate resolutions and ordinances. And whereas Article 4, Section 1W authorizes the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council to adopt laws protecting and promoting the health and general welfare of the Oglala Sioux Tribe and its membership. And whereas Article 4, Section 1T of the Oglala Sioux Constitution gives the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council the power to delegate to subordinate boards or officers any of the enumerated powers in Article 4, Section 1, reserving the right to review any action taken by virtue of such delegated power. And whereas the Finance Committee is a standing committee of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council and has been delegated the power to oversee financial matters on behalf of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council and Oglala Oyate. And whereas on September 21st, 2017, the Finance Committee met, reviewed and approved a motion approving a general fund modification from the White Clay District Tribal Council representatives travel line items to have a check cut and given to the White Clay District to help supplement and support the remaining 50 education assistance applications in the White Clay District. And whereas the White Clay District Tribal Council representatives each have tribal li travel line items in their 2017 budgets in the amount of $35,000 annually, and neither representative has exhausted the budget amount in that line item in each of their respective 2017 budgets. And whereas the White Clay District Tribal Council representative CL1 has funds available in the 2017 budget to transfer $3,000 from line item number 8425 to the White Clay District to help supplement and support the remaining education assistance applications in that district. And whereas the White Clay District Tribal Council representative CL2 has funds available in the 2017 budget to transfer $5,000 from line item number 8425 to the White Clay District to help supplement and support the remaining education assistance applications in that district. And whereas it is in the best interest of the Oglala Sioux Tribe and the Oglala Oyate to approve the general fund budget modifications to the White Clay District Tribal Council representatives travel line items to transfer funds from those travel line items to the White Clay District in the amounts of $3,000 and $5,000 respectively in order to supplement the remaining education assistance applications in the district. Now therefore be it resolved for all the above mentioned reasons the Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe hereby approves a general fund budget modification tra transferring $3,000 from the White Clay District Tribal Council representative CL1 budget line item number 8425 to the White Clay District for use to help supplement the 50 remaining education assistance applications in the White Clay District and be it further resolved for all the above mentioned reasons, the Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe hereby approves a general fund budget modification transferring $5,000 from the White Clay District Tribal Council representative CL2 budget line item number 8425 to the White Clay District for use to help supplement the 50 remaining education assistance applications in the White Clay District. <coughs> and with that, I move. Motion by Cora Whitehorse, seconded by Tina Merdanian. Question, Question Lydia Bearkiller. I guess um, like we um, brought up earlier about the budget and uh, policies and our procedures for um, this budget that we have, that we approve. Okay, so um, when I first came on board, we were told that that process that took place last administration was um, not right or it was wrong to do that, to use, use their uh, line items like, like what um, was uh, reported by the treasurer. So, you know, today I don't support it. I'm not going to open that door and um, 
I, I still feel like every time we bring something up, it's against policy, or it's a procedure, it's a violation, and this too deems a violation to the process or a procedure. And, uh, you know, I guess uh, we're, we're all uh, due to our own opinions and how we look at it, but, you know, some things die because of that. We, we bring on issues and then we're told policy and procedure and, and violation. So I, I still feel like this is what we're doing today. And myself, I won't support it. Thank you. Tina Merdanian, Jackie Sears, Collins Clifford, and Robin Tapio. Thank you, Lydia, for bringing that to light in regards to violations of, of budgets and, and um, processes and so forth. And what was deemed as a violation is the fact that the budget modifications taken out of travel to, to give to, to realign, and that was the money was going to the individual council representatives allocation versus going to the district. Now, as far as budget modification, I spoke to the treasurer. I had the treasurer come and speak to the finance committee regarding this process and that there was not necessarily uh, no restrictions on a general fund budget. The only thing was is to follow the budget modification process and which we did. We showed the budget modification. It's attached to this resolution. Therefore, we're not violating any processes or procedures or guidelines in regards to a budget modification to write a check to give to our district. So just to clarify that there is no violations. Thank you. Jackie Sears. I think, you know, we always hear that every administration they say you can't do this can't do that but we never see anything in black and white you know telling us it's wrong and it's always somebody's opinion so you know according to the financial management manual um, I think the treasurer said all we have to do is a budget modification so you know I don't see where there's a problem we're following the our ordinance in place thank you Collins Clifford thank you um Ms. Sears. Okay. Robin Tapio. That's correct. Okay. Dave Puyer. Mr. Chair, I, I just think that th this process could have took uh, place by written request from the two council reps or any one of us that is, that is in house because we're within the uh, budget requirements. It's not we're taking millions of dollars out of something or moving something really weird. I think this could have been just been taken within committee or by individually. Thank you. Okay, this is, thank you. I call, I call With for that, vote. I'm going to take a five minute break. To oh, we got one more. We got a vote, I guess. I'm sorry. Blaine Little Thunder. Jim Mix. Yes. Cora White Horse. Yes. Stanley Lowe Whiteman. No. Austin Watkins. No. Stephanie Leisure. Yes. Valentina Merdanian. Yes. Lydia Bearkiller. No. James Cross. No. Robin Tapio. Huh. Philip Goodcrow. Oh. David Puyer. Sonia Littlehawk Weston. Huh. Jackie Sears. Huh. Colin C.J. Clifford. Oh. Lisa Jumpin' Eagle de Leon. Uh huh. Craig Dillon. Yes. <coughs> Motion did carry 13 yes, 3 no, 1 not voting. We need to take a five minute break because we have technical difficulties with the laptop. So, five minutes.
and services. The blue Kia Are we ready to begin? Philip, please have a chair. Yeah, we're starting. I did too. Go ahead and read your resolution, please. Resolution of the Oglala Sioux Tribe, Oglala Sioux Tribe, an unincorporated tribe resolution of the Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe in support of the Oglala Sioux Tribe's Oyate Blahilia program for the continuing application of services through the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Indian Health Services, Special Diabetes Program for Indian Communities Directed Grant. Whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe adopted its constitution and bylaws by re referendum vote on December 10, 1935, in accordance with Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934, 25 U.S.C. 5123, and under Article 3 of the Oglala Sioux Tribal, Tribal Constitution, the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council is the governing body of the Oglala Sioux Tribe, and whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe's Oyate Blahilia program is submitting an application for a continuing grant, U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Indian Health Services, Special Diabetes Program for Indian Community Directed Grant, and whereas over 60% of Oglala Sioux Tribe's membership are 20 years and of age and under, and whereas this continuing grant will identify at-risk youth through screening and early identification and indicators of diabetes and teach health, health, healthy lifestyles now. Therefore, be it resolved that the Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe hereby approves and supports the Oyate Blahilias program continuing grant to the U U.S. Depart United States Department of Health and Human Services, Indian Health Services Special Diabetes Program for Indians Community Directed Grant. I move. Motion by Lisa Jumpin Eagle De Leon. Seconded by Lydia Bearkiller. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then be that the last, therefore be it resolved is that the president is authorized to execute? Okay. Yes. <laughs> Call for the vote, please. Blaine Little Thunder. Oh. Jim Mix. Yes. Core White Horse. Yes. Stanley Little White Man. Yes. Austin Watkins. Oh. Stephanie Leisure. Yes. Valentina Merdanian. Yes. Lydia Bear Killer. Yes. James Cross. Yes. Robin Tapio. Huh. Philip Goodcrow. Huh. David Puyo. Yes. Sonia Lil Hawk Weston. Ha. Huh. Jackie Sears. Ha. Huh. Colin C. J. Clifford. Oh. Lisa Jumpin Eagle Dalion. Oh ha. Huh. Craig Dillon. Yes. 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 Motion did carry 17 yes, zero no. Thank you, Council. Thank you, HHS committee. Is that, the, is that everything you had there? Yeah. Now we have Wounded Knee. Yes, we will go into the Wounded Knee District. They're out there. The child, Michaela, she's set, set there. They're so keeping them in. I'll hold them off. I, um, I have some documents handed out, coming out to you guys, some resolutions um, from the Wounded Knee District. Um, I have the young lady out there sorting them. They brought them to me unassorted, so I'm getting your packet together. Um, on, I'll start with, um, oh, I'll wait till Lisa gets in. If you don't, if you don't mind, give, her, give me a minute. 
<laughs> Dave Puyer. While we're on a break, you know, the other day, council, we passed something on that uh, personnel, they'll, now that personnel policies, it's a memo went out to the programs where temporary employees can't travel. And it's in some of the programs is uh, the grants that they have. So they're confined to the offices. They can't get out in the districts to do their work. So how do, how do we uh, take care of that? Uh, Mr. Chairman. I believe we need to have uh, Dean Patton come down to, to explain what's going on with that. Yeah, you can do that. Our attorney is going to go visit with Dean real, real soon and then come back and come up with our plan, okay? Are you ready? Um, they're, they're almost done, but if we will, maybe we could recognize uh, Unchi Joyce from Wounded Knee real quick. She waited all day, too. <laughs> I, um, Lisa, can you come back in the room? Oh, here, here comes Joyce. You want to turn that mic on, Brother John? Um, Abraham, can you move backwards so Joyce could pull in there? Oh, I Joyce. just wanted to tell you that back on September 1st, um, a person, Melanie Jennings, called from the radio station and started in on one of the DJs, who's my grandson? And she said, where is he? What's he doing at your house? And all things like that. And my grandchildren are welcome in my house. And she just started in like that and then she went on to say a lot of uh, derogatory things about me and also about my grandson's wife. His wife is in California, but she started in on her. And finally, after, and I could tell she was angry. But so when she got through being angry, she cooled down and she didn't say anything more, so I hung up on her. And I thought that's all it was going to be until this past 27th. She did the same thing again. Probably when she comes to work, it's right after 6. She would come uh, through the phone to my home and on the 27th, uh, when I noticed that it was her, then I told her, well, I have eight pies uh, that I want to sell. And I said I was going to call the radio station. But then uh, she didn't pay attention to what that. She just started in on her derogatory statements again about what I should and shouldn't do. And I think this is all um, legally, you can call it harassment. But on the way coming into town on the uh, bus, I heard some people talking about elderly abuse and what constitutes elderly abuse. And this fits right into that. And the elderly abuse that she is doing to me I, I uh, looked at it in contrast to some a couple of other incidents similar to that that happened to me. And each time, the people were put in jail for 30 days. 
and this lady must be untouchable, or she has some kind of hold on people on the radio station with Tom Casey, or I talked with the board member, either they're uh, ignoring what I'm saying because I'm an elderly. That's just the way the world is. They think we're nothing. And if it wasn't for me, a lot of the people here wouldn't be here. And see, there's a seriousness to the matter. And also, I'm handicapped. And I fear this lady because she has been in the military. And a lot of people that I talk to, I have a, a booklet here that I took a petition, a petition around to get signed by people I meet because I can't go anywhere. So when I meet them here, when I come into Pine Ridge or I meet them at home at the post office or that, I got signatures and I have 43. And the document reads that this lady uh, who could be an administrator at the radio station and she is a DJ. And so I wrote on this paper that I didn't want her to do either one of the things for the radio station. Because I look back and I remember when my mother and Nellie Red, Red Owl and Agnes Lamont and the lady that I was sitting with earlier her mother and grandmother, we used to play up on the hill for this radio station. And it wasn't even there then. But now it's been there 35 years. And I want to ask Tom Casey, who have you trained to replace you? And I'm going to fall, so I've got to sit down. Oh. Yeah, look, this is okay. And that's the key that I come with today. Uh, the council employees, Tom Casey, and he's always, uh, always on the radio with the meetings, but. Um, when that radio station started, and we all used to pay up there. There was no building. Then we said a white person or a half-breed person would teach one of our own, a full-blood person, to replace them in the capacities that they're holding. And that's why I ask you, Tom, who have you trained to replace you? And see, this goes back to what I was saying about the council man and what have we, uh, we discussed that he was away a lot and he knew nothing about a lot of things on reservation. And so I ask you to tell him, inform him of how the radio station began. And that is, we were going to have these people such as yourself, Tom, and you would train a Lakota per boy or girl, a, a person, to man your position. You were going up to 35 years. Who have you trained? We need to go back to why we have that radio station. The way that this Melanie Denise is treating me, radio station, he he. Ash, he ha, and they tell us law and order 
a stanley little white man ako in machaki pinoaki akin and kiwa glakina a honey me law one charge of latina he owns now lexiva matimia upon lecherti or on time pre asna in at Goku na Hunku Giha, a hoy with Chinese head chun chas na Tima ye apum kena. Thirty days, do hunting guide head chun chas na Tima ye apas nuko aninche. Hole we and gile head chak jimijo o manku acha imunke. Le he la ki han tok tok hanum he punk han. Hia he han un hap snee loe. And so that's something I'm bringing to the council, too. Um, the law is the law. We can't change that as people. But the council can. And see, I think that's the way this problem that used to put someone in jail does not happen today because the law has changed. Le niung unki han tagni trocha e chung omsini. Unki tana wa un tana unki stimana. Hecha o homeninkel. That's why we say our lives are in a circle. Hecha ti na le skawicha shakilinant kawoyukcha ki han wash te. Because I have a master's degree, and I know what is entailed in the white man's educational system. And he chatan chanakun wo ho atkai le wo echuma echum pishinki le why why would you put my own Full-blood people in jail. I was standing with here. I, why do you put them in jail and leave this happy lady alone uh, to still come and harass me after she did that one time? And you enable Tom Casey to take care of situations like that. He's supposed to know better. When you get educated, you learn something. And that's why I got a master's degree in education. Tom there has education. But where is that education if he's going to allow this woman to harass me? She works for him. I wonder what else she does for him besides coming on the radio. And that's why he can't let her go. See, there are many things that are intertwined in a situation like this. But I'm 69 years old, and I understand a lot of things that happen in this world. Because I was married, I had, and my husband died, I have children, grandchildren. So I know that there are many things that happen today that don't happen when I was a little girl. But the law is the same. The law doesn't change. Only when tribal council gets involved, that's the only time the law doesn't uphold the law, the legal system away from the reservation. And, and those kind of things I see, and I ask Stanley Little White Man for help. Because before, remember when I brought this issue here, you told me to take it to law and order. And law and order is Stanley. And so I talked with him on the phone, and he said, I'll think about it. I don't know. So I'll think about it. And I will create a document according to what I come around thinking about. And it was supposed to happen over the weekend. 
And when I asked him for that document here just now, he said there was nothing because he didn't know how to do it. We look to you as council people to help us, especially in this day and age. Look at what the American president is saying about people and about um, us. And those kinds of things are happening around us. And this is happening right here to me. And I don't matter to you as a full blood Oglala Lakota. That's the way I receive it. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Huh. Lisa Jumping Eagle, De Leon. I'd like to thank you, Joyce, for um, speaking of your concerns. And I would like to recommend that you go to Keeley Board and um, adjust your I've issues with them. There. I've been there. He said he was going to help me, and he didn't do it. That's why my only recourse is coming to the council. I have no husband. And if he was alive, he would have taken care of it a long time ago. But I've got to catch the bus. Okay, go ahead. I also have referred that um, complaint to law and order um, and gave one to a copy of it to um, Tom Casey. Um, so, so, and it just, I just got it a couple of days ago. So um, I gave it to the proper people that um, I thought needed those. So um, I don't know if there'll be a timeline on um, a response to that, but um, thank you. <laughs> Stanley Lou White man. You know, we <clears throat> you know, I talked with the lady this afternoon and basically she did go all over. She did go to the Keeley board and talk to law enforcement, <clears throat> all of this stuff. So the only thing that I could offer her was that uh, if she's not getting any remedies for her to go through the civil process. So she understands that the civil process is what she needs to go through in order to take care of this, uh, this uh, issue between her and another individual. So that's kind of where it's at. Um, um, I don't know about putting anybody in jail for arguments, you know, I mean, that's not law and order's deal here. Okay. Collins Clifford. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, did you have 1701? There wasn't no 1701 okay. attached, so I believe we just had five. Okay, so you all got <clears throat> documents. You should have uh, 1701, resolution 1701, oh, I mean 1702, 03, 04, 05, and 06 from the Winnetonee District. <clears throat> I'll start off with uh, the first resolution. Resolution of the Wounded District Council of the Wounded District of the Oglala Sioux Tribe. Resolution of the Wounded District Council appointing Mr. Malvin Cummings to serve as the Wounded District Representative on the OST Allocation Committee for a term of five years. Whereas the Wounded District is one of the nine districts recognized by the Oglala Sioux Tribe's Constitution, and whereas the Wounded District Constitution was ratified by the Oglala Sioux Tribe. Sioux Tribal Ordinance 83-10 on May 3rd, 1983. And whereas under Article 9, Section 1A, the Wounded Knee District Council has the power to enact resolutions, and whereas the Wounded Knee District Council did meet on September 7th, 2017 with a quorum present and discussed the OST Allocation Committee member position for the Wounded Knee District. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Wounded Knee District Council hereby appoints Mr. Malvin Cummings to serve as a Wounded Knee District Representative on the OST Allocation Committee for a term of five years. 
certification. And that would belong to, uh, oh, I guess I, as the other side secretary of the Wouldn't Need District Council, Wouldn't Need District hereby certify that this resolution was adopted by a vote of 18 for, zero against, zero not voting during a regular session held on the seventh day of September 2017. Resolution number 1702. And I move that we acknowledge your motion. My motion. Motion by Collins Clifford, seconded by Lisa Jumpenigo de Leon. Question, Dave Puyer. Chairman, do these, in the land committee, uh, these districts that didn't follow the, or had to show hands as long as they come back and do those requirements in that uh, election ordinance of background checks and drug testing and all that? Because these are, this is a subordinate board, board of the uh, council. Collins, Clifford. Mr. Chair, at, at this time, um, I think that that was that argument was already brought through by uh, the um, American Horse District, or Allen, and it was left that the, if, the, if the districts have their own constitution and they're following by their own constitution, we would respect that, and that's how that ended. And I feel the same way about our district. It has its own constitution and follows its own election policy. So thank you. Stephen Gunn. The ordinance 1715 adopts the grazing code of the tribe and it defines the allocation committee as follows. It says the allocation committee of the Oglala Sioux tribe shall oh. consist of okay. Nine members, one from each respective district of the Pine Ridge Reservation. Each district shall elect slash appoint a representative to the allocation committee. <clears throat> each respective district representative elected slash appointed shall be certified by their district and approved by the OST executive committee prior to assuming office. The first board elected under this ordinance shall draw lots to determine the length of their office, five members shall hold five-year terms and four members shall hold three-year terms. All terms thereafter shall be a period of five years. In the event a new member is not elected or appointed and confirmed, the current member will remain until a new member is elected slash appointed and confirmed. A quorum of five shall be necessary to conduct business, etc. So it looks like the procedure is for the districts to elect or appoint them and for the executive committee to confirm them. So under this ordinance, there's no action for the tribal council. And I don't know that Mr. Cummings will be appointed for five years. It depends um, on the drawing of lots. Um, okay, just, just for an update real quick, um, Mr. Cummings did do his hair follicle and his background check. So that, I guess if, if that would be okay, we could go ahead and move it. They would have to go to ex executive committee first. Okay, Stanley, little white man. I think too, the term of five years is gonna have to be stricken until the lots are drawn. Okay. <clears throat> Refer resolution. 1702 to XB. Okay. Second, oh, excuse me. Well. <laughs> with, with the amendment that the length of his term will be de dependent on the drawing of lots. Correct. Yes. Okay, we got a motion and a second. Secretary, please call for the vote. Lisa Jumpenigo de Leon. Plain Little Thunder. Oh. Jim Meeks. Yes. Cora White Horse. Yes. Stanley Love White Man. Yes. Austin Watkins. Oh. Stephanie Leisure. Yes. Valentina Merdanian. <clears throat> yes. Lydia Berkiller. Yes. James Cross. Oh, yes. 
Robin Tapio. Ha. Huh. Philip Kukro. Ho. Oh. David Puyer. Yes. Sonia Lilhawk Weston. Ha. Huh. Jackie Sears. Ha. Huh. CJ Clifford. Ha. Oh. Lisa Jumpin Eagle Dalion. Ha. Uh -huh. Craig Dillon. Yes. Motion did carry 17 yes, zero no. Thank you, Council. Next would call in Clifford. Um, my next resolution, 17-03 from the Wendigny District Resolution of the Wendigny District Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe. Resolution of the Wendigny District Council requesting the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council implement back into OST personnel and policy manual a nine-member board with one representative elected from each nine districts. Whereas the Wendigny District is one of the nine districts recognized by the Oglala Sioux Tribe Constitution, and whereas the Wounded Knee District Constitution was ratified by the Oglala Sioux Tribal Ordinance 83-10 on May 3, 1983. Whereas under Article 9, Section 1A, the Wounded Knee District Council has the power to enact resolutions, and whereas the Wounded Knee District did meet on September 17, September 7th, 2017 with a quorum present and discussed the current process to hire employees for the Oglala Sioux Tribe. And whereas the Wounded Knee District Council would like to see a local control given back to the district governments when it comes to a fair and impartial hiring practice for tribal positions and would like to have one representative from each of the nine districts placed back into the current OST personnel and policy manual. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Wounded Knee District Council hereby requests the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council to implement back into the OST personnel and policy a nine-member board with one representative elected by each of the nine districts. I move. Motion by Collins Clifford, seconded by Lisa Jumpin Eagle de Leon. Stephen Gunn. This would have to be an ordinance of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council to amend the personnel manual. There was an ordinance um, to bring back a number of amendments to the manual, um, <clears throat> although not including this one, um, which was tabled and the matter was referred to a working session which has been scheduled for October 16th and 17th at the casino. Sonia Weston and then Cora Whitehorse. Um, with that being said by the attorney, you know, I was just going to ask the Wounded Knee District uh, Council if they would be agreeable to just send this to the working session because I think, I think that uh, we as the, the reason why it got tabled was I think a lot of us council did have questions and uh, part of it was the selection committee and how it was being, uh, uh, how the hiring process was being done and I think that was one of the reasons why it was tabled to set up another two days to work on it. So if they're agreeable, could we move this one to the working session? Um, Garfield? At this moment, Garf. Um, <clears throat> good afternoon, Council. Um, the Wounded District, we understand that we don't have the authority to... Um, Garf, for the record. State your name and your position, please. Oh, okay, my name is Garfield Still. Um, I, I guess I'm here as a district chairman for Wounded Knee. Um, we understand that we don't have the, the authority to create ordinances. However, under our constitution, it gives us the authority to create resolutions. And I think we have three resolutions here that are done by ordinance, but we just want it on record that that is a request from our people and I'll be taking these to the Crazy Horse Planning Commission meeting on Wednesday to all the other um, eight districts chairmen to see if we could get eight other resolutions to come forward on these because these are concerns from the general population in the districts. And, and we understand that we can't change them by a vote with the resolution. However, like you stated, you know, a, a working session or whatever, that'll be your intent as a representative to re represent your districts to make those changes in, in all these documents here. So we understand that we can't change it by ordinance, but it's just the authority given to us in our constitution. Coral Whitehorse. 
Thank you. I was just going to um, make a motion to table this, to send it to the working session and bring it back after the working session. Lisa Jumping Eagle de Leon. But can we also add 17 04 and 17 05 to that? Uh, Cora White Horse. Those are separate issues. The personnel policy is one issue itself. Steve Gunn. I would think that um, on these are these are duly enacted resolutions of the district, and they they require no approval by the council. They are what they are. Um, I think the recommendation in 1703 is one that should go to the working session and should be fully considered and deliber deliberated by everyone present. So that one could be referred to finance to take up at the working session. 1704 deals with the, um, the um, Oglala Sioux Housing Authority Charter and it also wants a nine person board. And Dave, would that be a land committee? Okay, that would go to HHS. And then 1705 is um, dealing with the Gaming Commission, and that, that would probably go to law and order. So they're recommending changes in the hiring board, housing authority board, and the Gaming Commission, and those probably should be referred to the respective committees, so finance, HHS, and law and order. Dave Puyer. Mr. Chairman, uh, on that, uh, housing one, I think it might behoove the HHS committee or your office to contact HUD because there was some stipulations put on the Ogallala Sioux Tribe back when this was reduced that if this goes back to a nine-member board, this might jeopardize funding for the housing authority because housing authority is the one recommended a three-member board for the housing authority, so I think you need a clarification from housing, I mean, from HUD itself. I can I can make that call when, when this meeting is over just for clarification. Lisa, jump and eagle. I was just going to um, second Cora's motion on the first um, 1703 okay. resolution. We have a motion on the floor to table and refer back to the, the working session. to the working session. Okay. On all of them? To, to the appropriate committees. We should do it, each one of them, separately. Is it? How do you want to proceed? Would you, would you entertain a motion to refer 1705 to the working session on the personnel manual and refer 1704 to the HHS committee and refer 1705 to the Law and Order Committee? Okay, I'll change my motion. 1703 to be referred to the working session for the personnel policy and procedure manual. 1704 to be referred to HHS and have the president check on the validity of using a nine member board. 1705 to be referred back to Law and Order <coughs> Committee. And 1706, to be referred to Finance Committee for the 2018 General Fund Budget. Second. Then we get rid of all of them. Okay. Secretary has it. We have a motion and a second. Blaine Little Thunder. Thank you. Oh yeah, oh yeah, take down on that. Oh my God. Oh my God, you're so close. Oh my God, what a lot of you are doing. Oh, you're so close. 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 Okay, 
my district from Eagle Nest District, I know uh, where the further out in the district, I know some of those things that people ask for, you know, that's a, it's people's part of every district that's what they want. As far as the, uh, the nine, board, nine board member out there, you know, such as the housing, uh, we don't get a fair chance to get any houses out there that uh, some of the people that people don't know that uh, have get houses and uh, who knows who authorizes them to get houses or and what uh, conditions of the houses that needs to be repaired. It seems like it, people that uh, ask for uh, help and so forth that I think it they don't get the help or the houses and also with the uh, other uh, nine board members that being here. So uh, I think it's the people's power that should go through the council instead of going back to the, the uh, committees and also to the working session. So I just want to comment that uh, for the people out there. Go to Colin Collins Clifford. I just want to say that I do know, I understand the, the chartering system, whether it be a 638 or 10297, if housing in Denver, based on the fact that we contract that, is attempting to dictate to us how we run our program over here is in violation of its 638 process. I do know that much by law. So if they're trying to dictate that we have a three-member board, I would like to see that document myself too because I requested it two years ago and I still have not received it where the government said we can only have three members because that's against the 638 contract laws for them to dictate to us. We, we set our self-determination where we see it. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Secretary, please call for the vote. Blaine Little Thunder. Yes. Yeah. Jim Meeks. Yes. Cora Whitehorse. Yes. Stanley Little Whiteman. Yes. Austin Watkins. Oh. Stephanie Leisure. Yes. Valentina Merdanian. Yes. Lydia Bear Killer. Yes. James Cross. No. Robin Tapio. Uh -huh. Philip Goodcrow. No. David Puyer. Sonia Little Hot Weston. Hi. Jackie Sears. Ha. Huh. Colin C.J. Clifford. Yeah. Lisa Jumpin Eagle Dalion. Yeah. Craig Dillon. Yes. Motion did carry. 12 yes, 5 no. Thank you. So them four will be point put into their appropriate um, committees. Um, I have resolution 1706, um, resolution of the Wounded Knee District Council of the Wounded Knee District of the Oglala Sioux Tribe. Resolution of the Wounded Knee District Council requesting the Oglala Sioux Tribe Council to increase the FY18 general fund but Collins, that's already been tabled too. They were all referred to their respective okay. committees. Three, four, five, and six. All right, thank you, I apologize. That's fine. Apology accepted. Um, and I'd like to give the, have some time to give the floor to Whitney District President. <coughs> Thank you, Lisa. Um, real quick, you know, um, the last term I sat as a um, council representative on the uh, way out, we took action to have an attorney look into the status of the land that was purchased by the economic development, um, I think, or the, um, 
empowerment zone. I apologize. Empowerment zone. They purchased a lot of land within the Wundanee district that should have came back to the Ogallan Sioux tribe according to our actions back in 2000, I believe, 10. And um, that land has all been sold by the CDC out there in our district. And that those actions were never, ever approved by our district council. So my question, legally, you know, if that land was to come back to the tribe, our constitution says that we can't sell our mortgage, our lands. So I want to know if those were some legal purchases for that property that was sold in our district. And I would like this this tribal council here to, um, to take a stand on that and to see where we can get on that issue because as soon as we got out of office, that was no longer an issue. But that was a lot of land right by Manderson that we could use for development. Um, and so I'd like to see if this council would take that to task and try to look into legalities of that land purchase that was that was done. In, in, my, in my opinion, you know, it was a violation on the tribe's constitution. So uh, I, I wanted to bring that back to see if that's something we could move forward with again on behalf of the, the Wundanee District and the Ogallan Sioux Tribe. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Garf. Craig Dilley. Mr. Chairman, I call for a meeting on Tuesday and child protection, but it sounds like there's plans in the works to address all of those shortcomings. And so I think we can forego that meeting. Uh, I'm, I have confidence in the HHS committee to, and uh, law and order to address those shortcomings. But we do need to have a drop dead date when these are gonna change, is they're gonna take effect because we can't continue. So that, that's my concern. So just letting everybody know that hopefully we'll get this worked out. Thank you for that, Collins. Wait, hold on, you all raised your hand, three of you all one time up there. Collins Clifford. Um, I just, in 2014, I brought forth um, uh, the, the tribe to look into the CDC on their selling of equipment and selling of lands. And I believe they signed it to Mr. Van Norman at the time to look into the CDC policy regulations. And it actually, back then, that was a tribal thing. They was, they don't have that type of authority to go be selling or trading any of the equipment or land that they bought. It would revert right back to the district that they represented. So, and I believe that that, that came forward because currently right now they, uh, this past year, they took a, a front end loader backhoe from us and that, and that I don't know where that, that is, but I do know that Mr. Van Norman was assigned that to be looked into. And I, I too would, would support the fact that that is our district and as a representative from there, I would ask respectfully for the council to take that to task on behalf of our, yeah, or bring the feds in on it or something, because I believe it's serious enough to, to actually make that move to bring the feds in. So if, if it needs be, I'll, I'll motion that on the floor today. So that's your motion? Yes. Seconded by Craig Dillon. You're the fourth one. Jackie Sears, Sonia Weston. Okay, um, no, this isn't on that. It's on the previous topic. So shall we wait till the motion's done? Yeah, let's. Well, go ahead. Recognize the secretary. Um, so I think it's about a, maybe a month and a half ago. I was contacted by Mr. Frank Ekafi and he wanted to get on the agenda for both land committee and executive board to discuss, um, I'm sure it's on the land. So <clears throat> we never had a chance to meet with Mr. Ekafi, so I just wanted to let the council know that he was interested in 
coming to both the committees and um, discussing this item. Okay. Call for the vote, please, and then we'll come back and go. But, but no. Yeah, go ahead. So in regards to some of the issues, it this is something that's prevalent across the reservation. So I wish that in your motion that you consider the CDCs that are existing throughout the reservation, that they follow that due diligence process that we've implemented in regards to the businesses that have been established because for the most part, they are impacting our communities and oftentimes there's no communication, no reporting, and no, they're not held responsible or accountable for how they're operating their businesses within our communities. So therefore, I would recommend that you change it to the CDCs existing within the reservation boundaries. Is that okay with you, Craig? Yes. Okay, I agree. State your motion. I motion that we have we have our attorneys contact I guess the FBI um, and to have an investigation put forward on all the CDCs um, on on the reservation. I I I think that if anything. I, some of this thought ca actually came from the Martin area, so I would probably at this time exclude the Martin one because it actually is tied into their own communi community and it involves, and then everything that they've done it involves the whole Oglala Sioux tribe. But the other districts have seemed to fail our people in that fashion of the CDC, so I would like to see the other eight CDCs investigated. So that's your motion? My motion. And the second? Yeah. Call for the vote, please. Blaine Little Thunder. Oh. Jim Meeks. Yes. Cora White Horse. Yes. Stanley Little White Man. Yes. Austin Watkins. Oh. Stephanie Leisure. Yes. Valentina Merdanian. Yes. Lydia Bear Killer. Yes. James Cross. No. Robin Tapio. Yeah. Philip Goodcrow. Yeah. David Puyer. No. Sonia Lilhawk Weston. Yeah. Jackie Sears. <coughs> huh. Colin C.J. Clifford. Oh. Lisa Jumpin' Eagle Dalion. Oh, huh. Craig Dillon. Yes. Motion did carry 12 yes, 5 no. Thank you. That's all we got. Jackie Sears, Sonia Weston, Lydia Bear Killer, and Tina Merdanian. Then we're going to okay. close and adjourn our meeting. Okay, um, uh, Mr. Hawk, James Hawk um, did pass, pass out a proposal here. So um, uh, that's for your information. I did talk to Yvonne, and she said it was uh, for you to read before the meetings that we have on um, CPS, so that way they can address it there. You requested the floor for it? No, it's okay. just that Yvonne said that she just wanted it passed out to the council for their information and be ready for the meeting okay. when she addresses them. All right, Sonia Weston. And I think just for clarification that uh, CPS and ICWA is under Law and Order Committee, so that would come to us first. And because um, reading it, it does entail training and uh, uh, just a proposal itself, but that would come under Law and Order Committee. So maybe on Wednesday we might be able to address it. Yeah, and then I'll go on to Finance Committee, I guess, for their blessings. Lydia Bear Killer. I guess uh, my comment is, um, I guess at the last report she made, and, and I'm talking about Yvonne Ito, um, she 
said she was going to submit uh, a budget and a proposal. And that's what's in front of us. And it's outlined exactly what she's going to provide and um, how long it's going to be. The time frames are on there. And there's a budget of 121500 um, that she's submitting. OK, so um, if, um, if the committees are going to do this, that, that budget threshold is, is 75000 so it's going to be waiting again till the next council meeting, which is going to be probably the end of the month. Okay, so then right now, um, when, I, when I did the last report to Law and Order, I gave you guys the budgets on where we're at with CPS, ICWA, and uh, all of them up there. And right now we're running a, like a half a million in the red in the general fund for uh, CPS, a little over. So, I, I was thinking that um, if the tribe uh, wants to address the CPS, I think we need to do it um, today and move it and have them give them a starting date because the contract, everything is in here and what she's proposing to do. We need those reimbursements. We need all those reimbursements to be submitted and at her last um, <clears throat> review, she said there's possible about 100, 100 clients that could be put into the system and that these reimbursements can come back to the tribe. So that's where we're at. Tina Merdanian. No, Collins Clifford. I, I believe this, this particular document needs to actually be reviewed and if there is such thing as them doing not doing their reports that needs to be brought forth by our executive director and i had asked them res be respectful and follow the process of bringing stuff forward in particular but i find once again them bringing it straight to tribal council without following our tribal processes of having documents and proposals and and contracts being brought forward here and so thank you I, i'd like to make i that a made point. the recommendation for time's sake because i understand it's not coming on the floor it's not on the floor mr testerman you can have a seat there but we're not going to do that so if it needs to happen it would have to go back to finance committee bottom line law and order and finance so that could probably be something that could go to and you don't we don't have to do a vote here just take it to the to, to the working session okay i need a motion to adjourn motion by robin tapio seconded by jim meeks and stephanie leisure call for the vote please lane little thunder oh jim meeks yes Cora white horse yes stanley little white man yes austin watkins oh. Stephanie Leisure. Yes. Valentina Merdanian. Yes. Lydia Bearkiller. Yes. James Cross. No. Robin Tapio. Huh. Philip Goodcrow. David Puyer. Sonia Lilhawk Weston. Jackie Sears. Ha. Huh. Colin C.J. Clifford. Yeah. Lisa Jumpin' Eagle Dalion. Craig Dillon. Motion to adjourn, 14 yes, two no, one not voting. Thank you, council. At this time, I would like to have Cora Whitehorse, would you give us a closing prayer, please? Thank you. Thank you for bringing us together today and helping us make decisions. Um, help everyone here have a safe travel home. And um, I hope people are keeping warm out there. 
and help them to prepare for the cold days to come. Thank you. Oh. Thank you, everyone, for your commitment. Excuse me, no HHS tomorrow. <laughs>